Well, we're going to look at a number of different scenarios, and uh, these are not meant to be inclusive, just sort of representative of the types of decisions uh, that could be made using this type of uh, analysis. Adding or dropping a line or segment, uh, make or buy, should we make it internally or outsource, special orders, should they be accepted or not? And we've seen this one before. We've seen special orders before. Uh, and finally, uh, should we sell something as it is, or can we make more money by processing it further? So let's start with adding or dropping a line or segment. Well, let's set up our scenario. Right here we can see, uh, and we're just going to follow the examples in the book. They're, they're, they're fairly good. Uh, so here we are. We have a company that has three product lines, plasma TVs, uh, e-readers, and digital cameras. And we can see, based on the way that they've uh, uh, written out their uh, contribution format income statement, we can see the digital cameras appear to be a drain on the overall company by $6,400. Uh, let's go through this example, and at the very end, we're going to show how we can use uh, segment reporting, what we've done before, traceable uh, and common fixed costs by, seg by categorizing our costs in traceable and common, how we wouldn't run into this problem. But this is, this is a really good setup because what we're seeing here is that when we just report things in this type of format, although it's contribution format, we haven't taken any pains to separate, separate traceable and common fixed costs. We've all categorized them into one. In other words, the fixed costs are allocated. We're going to see how sometimes a choice about how we present our information could lead us to believe that something is wrong. So let's keep this in mind. We're losing 6,400 on digital cameras. Let's try to fix that. So here's a, uh, a way to look at it. Uh, what we've done is we've taken all of the costs and, and we're going to look at each cost and to figure out which one is avoidable and which one isn't. So our salaries, and here, here's, here it is. We're given these costs. And look at this, we're going to classify them into not avoidable and avoidable. The, the big question that comes up right away is, well, how do you know it's avoidable and how do you know it's not avoidable? Well, typically you're given some information on each of the costs and working for a company, you're going to know. I mean, you're going to be the one that has to decide whether they're avoidable or not. But for the, for the purposes of getting through this book, getting through the chapters, the exercise, any exams, you'll be given the information. Based on the information, you have to make the decision whether they are or aren't. <clears throat> so salaries, we're told that if you get rid of the segment, you get rid of all these people. That's avoidable. Advertising, we're, uh, we're also told that, hey, all the advertising dollars relate to the specific product. We can get rid of that. Utilities, well, this is allocated costs to this segment. You get rid of the segment, the utility bill is still on because it's one building. Depreciation for the fixtures, well, we, we're not going to do anything about the depreciation on the fixtures. Get rid of the segment, the fixtures are still sitting there. Uh, the next cost we have is rent, and that's an allocated cost. There's a rent for the building, and some of it is allocated to this product line. Well, that doesn't go away. So you see, these are not avoidable. We get rid of the line, we still got to pay this. So it's irrelevant for our decision. Do you get that? This is irrelevant. Uh, insurance. Well, the insurance is for the inventory. If we get rid of the product line, uh, we also get rid of this inventory. So off it goes, right? And then you have selling an administrative expense of $4,800. That's the overhead. Again, it's allocated. We're not going to do anything about that. So it doesn't go away. So we're really only going to save 12000 bucks. Okay, good enough. But we're losing sixty four, right? Well, our contribution margin uh, uh, from the uh, digital camera line that would be lost is $16,000. we are going to save 12000 bucks, So we're going to lose 4000 bucks by getting rid of the line. The line looks like it's losing $6,400. But if we get rid of it, there are certain costs we can't get rid of that we'll lose another 4000 above that. We've got at least $16,000 in contribution margin covering off some of the costs that are avoidable. So there's another 4000 that could go towards the non-avoidable expenses. Now, this is a long way around. Had we just presented the information as we learned in Chapter 12, to start looking at, uh, at courses 
for the uh, 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 sorry courses let's start looking at uh, uh, costs in terms of traceable and common let's see what we would have gotten so here we are here is what the income statement would look like had we done it along the lines of chapter 11. notice that we have our sales up here there's our contribution margin for digital cameras 16,000. here's our traceable fixed expenses these are traceable to the division, salaries, advertising, depreciation on the fixtures, and insurance. Now, we said that we can't get rid of this cost, the $1,600, but it is traceable. Let's not forget that. It is traceable. So, look at this. Suddenly, we have the product line, the segment margin is $2,400 positive. The way we presented it last time, we were losing 6400 This is 2400 positive. So you have $2,400 that is contributing towards the common fixed expenses because these aren't going away. These will not go away. And of all of these costs, the $1,600 would still be incurred anyway. So even if we had it presented in this form, uh, we would, well, first of all, we wouldn't even be making the decision about digital cameras. We're still up 2400 but if we had another line that was coming in that could say produce 5,000, then we would sort of start to look at this and say, well, you know, the 1,600, we can't avoid that anyways. That becomes relevant in that decision. But for this decision, uh, had we produced this type of formatted income statement to begin with, segment reporting with the cost broken out as traceable and common, we wouldn't have even had to make the decision to add or drop a line. It would have been obvious. Well, we're going to move on to the make or buy decision. And here's our setup is we have a company that's making a particular unit right now. They're making 8,000 units a year. And they have their cost per units broken down. Their total cost is $21 per unit uh, times 8,000 units, 168,000 a year. But when we look at some of the costs, direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, supervisor salary, depreciation of special equipment, eh, that doesn't sound like it's avoidable allocated general overhead well we know that's probably not avoidable so if we decide not to make it our cost per unit for relevant decision making is probably not going to be 21. so the setup in the book says hey listen someone will supply it for 19 bucks now a naive manager may may look at their data right away and say hey, you know what it's costing us 21 bucks per unit they're going to make it for 19 let's go ahead and do it but the question is, does the company really save that extra $2 a unit? Is it really costing $21? In other words, if we buy it for $19, are we truly avoiding $21? Let's find out. So here's our decision uh, uh, made a little bit more uh, uh, obvious. And here's our original production costs. And we're going to break it down uh, per unit and differential costs, whether we can make it or buy it, and our total costs. So direct materials can we save the six dollars if we buy it yes we can let's get rid of it direct labor can we save the four dollars yes we can that's relevant variable overhead can we save the dollar well that's the whole idea about variable overhead right yes we can let's get rid of it the supervisor's salary well look we're making an assumption that the supervisor is in charge of just this product so we get rid of the line we get rid of the supervisor there we go notice we're saving look at all the money we're saving over here so, so far, we're up to $14 per unit. Depreciation of special equipment. Ah, looks like we're going to have to pay that anyways. So, that's not relevant. Allocated general overhead of 5 bucks. Well, read what it says. Allocated general overhead. That's not going away. So, we don't really save that 5 bucks. So, really, it's costing us directly $14 to make. So, if we stopped making it, we would save $14 per unit. The company outside wants to sell it to us for 19, which is an extra five bucks. If we're making 8,000 of them, it turns into 40,000 bucks. And there we have it here. Here is what, uh, here are the costs that we can save, 112,000 by not making it. These are avoidable costs on 8,000 units. We'll pay 152,000 to buy it. We'll avoid 112. It's costing us $40,000 more, in which case making it is $40,000 in our favor so that's a, a sort of a nice way to look at it that sometimes when you start looking at all the all-in cost per unit the allocated overhead all of that stuff it leads 
oftentimes to the wrong decision because when you think about, well, I'll do something else, you're forgetting that a lot of costs simply can't be avoided, right? Um, well, what happens if, if there are certain costs that aren't part of the accounting system? An opportunity cost is not part of the accounting system. So let's think about that for a minute. Making this stuff is taking up space. What if we had another line in, in the factory that was already at capacity, that if we got rid of this, that other line, we could increase our output? Well, that's not considered in the accounting record. So if we're just going to our accounting information system and pulling out the relevant costs, what's not in there are opportunity costs. And a non-zero opportunity cost is a relevant cost. You have to consider that cost. So let's, let's uh, have a look at a situation where we do consider that cost. So here we are. This is our same situation that we have. Uh, it's costing us $14 to make the units in avoidable costs. It's actually costing us more, but in avoidable costs, it's 14. So we could avoid $112,000 in costs, but incur 152. However, if we could generate another 60,000 by using that space for something else, based on the costs that we can avoid and the benefits we're losing, now, now we've introduced a new idea into what we're doing, right? We're not just looking at costs. We're looking at foregone benefits as well. So costs, avoidable costs, you can call these avoidable benefits as well because if we don't do this, we avoid this benefit. Well, that's not good. Avoiding a positive thing is, is, is like encountering a negative thing. So we lose this. So our total cost of, of making these is really 172,000, 112 to make it and 60 that we give up. So 172 versus 152, we're 20 ahead by saying, okay, let's go ahead and make it outside because yes, it costs more than what we're, we're doing right now, but we have a better use for what we're doing right now by $60,000. So we'd be $20,000 ahead. So you know, you can't just say, well, what are the costs that we're incurring? What, what, what are the hard costs? Let me have a look at those. You have to start thinking in terms of soft costs too, that hang on, if we get rid of this, is there some other project that can take the space of that that we simply can't do right now? Now, how do you know all this? How will, how will you look at a situation and know that? Well, you work for that company or you work in that particular field. This is something that you're expected to know. You have to, when you look at a situation, uh, if all you can do is repeat stuff that's handed to you, is to look down and parrot back the numbers on a page, nobody needs you, nobody's going to pay for you. You have to see what others do not see. You have to see the possibility of what could happen if we do get rid of something. So. The make-or-buy decision came to the conclusion that let's continue to make it. A naive person ends there. A non-promotable person ends there. Somebody who will never be CEO ends there. Somebody who can see further and says, okay, well, fine. But listen, are we tying up a resource that could be put to better use? Now you're starting to see things that aren't there. You rise above everyone else. Listen, capitalism is a race, and it's not a race against a set time. It's a race against everyone else around you. You must run faster than everyone else, which means you must be better and see more and see, uh, and see clearer. Uh, and seeing things that are not there puts you way ahead of the multitudes of people that will only look at what's given to them. That's, that's it. To rise above, you simply just have to see the, un, the unseeable and, and, and uh, give it a number. There it is right there. The idea of opportunity cost. Don't forget that. Don't forget when you're making a decision, you have to also say, but listen, if I follow this course of action, what, what could I have been doing instead? And, and I need to incorporate that in because there's only so much uh, resources we have available, right? Look, I've taken too long on this. I think you get the point. Keep that in your head.